Hey everybody, I'm Mark. Welcome into my studio. Wanted to give you guys a quick update on this Dragon Burner tool head that I've been working on building as a replacement for the Stealth Burner that's in my Voron 2.4 printer. And you can see here, I've kind of got the structure of it mostly figured out, I think. Uh, we're still waiting on the hot end and the fans and a couple of other parts to arrive. And so I can't finish uh, building this today in this episode, uh, but I did wanna show you something that I've been working on, um, and that's a filament runout sensor that's hopefully gonna be compatible with this. I haven't actually tried it on this print head yet, so uh, we'll do that today in this episode. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to kind of go over, you know, this structure here. I've tried to dry fit this even without all of the components in place just to make sure I have all the right hardware, that I've put in all the heat, heat set inserts in the right places and that it all fits together and it's nice and solid. Uh, which it is. So this is the basic Dragon Burner. All these parts, uh, the printed parts, just came off of the, the standard Dragon Burner repository, you know, printing the correct ones for the hot end that I'm going to use and that sort of thing. Um, and then this mounting plate here is the mounting uh, plate again from uh, Chirpy's GitHub page, and I'll link to the specific directory on that page down in the description of this video um, in, in case you're curious. Uh, but this is the one for um, the X carriage mount that I have on my Voron 2.4, um, and then a probe mount also that came from that same repository for the beacon probe that we're going to be putting onto this uh, print head as well. And so I've just kind of, like I said, test fit this all to, to make sure that it's going to work together. Now, as far as a filament runout sensor, I prefer, if possible, to have an, a filament sensor in line, uh, you know, along the, my Bowden tube path that's running the filament into the extruder as close to the tool head as possible. And, you know, right now in my Voron 2.4, the filament sensor is like on the back of the printer, way far away from the print head. So I wanted to try to find a lightweight solution that I could mount somewhere right here in the tool head. Now, uh, Chirpy does on their GitHub repository have a uh, sort of uh, not official, still in beta uh, version of a filament cutter. And I have those parts here. I actually printed them out. Um, so this is, these are the housing for a filament cutter. And then it also has an optional uh, switch style runout sensor that you can put in here. And I printed these to see what they would look like. So this actually, uh, if you follow the instructions, this thing fits kind of in between your extruder and your hot end. So it would go kind of dropped in there, pushing all of this up just a little bit. Um, it looks a little weird. I don't need the filament cutter functionality. And I actually don't like the filament sensor being after the extruder. Um, based on the macros that I like to use the filament sensor for, for loading and unloading filament and stuff like that, I like it if my sensor is just before the extruder. And so while this is probably a good idea for some people, especially if you're doing like a, a multi-material type of a setup and you want the filament cutter, um, for me, this wasn't gonna be the solution. And so what I've done instead is I went online, uh, printables.com, I'll again link to uh, the, the listing that I found. I found a filament sensor that is kind of close to what we want and we're gonna modify it today and uh, print my modified version and see if we can assemble it and get it working with this wristwatch G2 extruder. So let's get started with that process. All right, so here's the filament runout sensor that I found online that we are going to start from. And this is a remix of another one. There are a lot of uh, sensors that are similar to this. The way they work is that they have this uh, switch. It's a switch with a little roller end on it that allows the filament to run across it more easily. So the filament running through this path here will push down that switch. And then, you know, you can hook your two wires up here and connect that in to uh, wherever your filament sensor connects to. For us, it'll be the tool head PCB on our print head itself. And um, so this is good for me. The reason that I liked this one as a starting point is that it has uh, screw in attachments on both sides here for Bowden tube couplers. So if we look more closely at the part itself here, you can see this, you can screw in here for a attachment point for your uh, PTFE tubing, and they have another one on the other end. Now what I want to do is I want to use kind of the top half of this. The filament uh, path is from left to right as we're looking at it here. I want to cut off the bottom part and instead replace this, this with something that will mount directly on the top of our wristwatch G2 extruder. And so what I did is I went ahead and downloaded this model and uh, it was just an STL file. So for me, the easiest way that I've found 
to uh, manipulate and modify STL files, most of the time, if I'm just doing something simple, is just to load them into Blender. And so I've done that here. So I've got the uh, model file itself loaded into Blender. I've, I've aligned it here with the origin so that uh, the filament path is running right along Y equals zero there. And so what I did then is I uh, chopped off the front of it. So we end up with something that looks kind of like this. And then I went ahead, if we hide this, I'll show you um, this piece here. Yeah, we'll start with that. So we'll, this piece over here, uh, what this is, is just a rectangular box type of a shape. Um, but I loaded in this, which is also the STL for the front of our wristwatch extruder. And I used that to subtract the kind of the top shape out of this. So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a rectangular box and then making something that will fit down in here. The idea is that we've got this press fit Bowden coupler in the top of our wristwatch extruder. I want to fit into that and then I want to utilize this angled geometry over here to make this sort of little latching piece that will snap over the top of this and hopefully hold this thing in place really tightly without needing any screws or hardware or whatever. Um, just kind of press fit it in and then latch it around this area right here to hold it in place. That's the idea. So um, yeah, I, I created this basic shape. And then if we take that basic shape, we can um, then marry it up with our runout sensor that we had over here. So all I've done is kind of clean this up a bit. I added some beveled edges in a certain a couple of spots to try to make the fit a little bit better and then lined this up with the filament path. So if we look at this in uh, x-ray mode, you can see the filament path is good. It's lined up with the top of the extruder here. And these two pieces, if we merge them together, should be the main body of our filament sensor. So our switch will fit in here. The filament again will go left to right as you're looking at it here on the screen. And this will fit right in the top of my extruder. And so given that, oh, and then also just as a extra sort of piece here, I did model a cover, which is just a slide on cover that is open on the back. So our wires can come out from our sensor, but we've covered up this side here. So that'll be a separate piece that we can print and hopefully slide on here. And then when we screw the uh, Bowden coupler in the top here, it will hold that, that cover in place as well. Um, so with those two pieces designed, I went ahead and exported those out of Blender as STLs. And if we go over here and look in my slicer, uh, I've got them both loaded here into the slicer. Now, uh, this main body piece does not have a good orientation to print um, that's going to not need supports, right? Usually I try my best when I design parts to make them so that they're printable without supports. Um, this one, just because of its weird geometry, there is no orientation you can do here to completely avoid supports. So what I've decided to do is print it with this side facing down because this is the side that's going to be facing the front of the extruder once we get this whole thing assembled. And the, the front of the rest of my tool head uh, has the, the, the textured pattern from the print bed um, as I've printed the parts. And so I, I thought it would look nice if this has that same texture as well since it'll be facing the front. So that was the main reason for uh, putting that that way. And then I've gone into this object and I've painted supports on, right? So these few overhangs, this round part here, and then these overhangs here uh, are marked as needing supports. And then if we look at the individual object settings, I've turned on for that body um, tree supports uh, on build plate only. So it'll get some tree supports to, to support those areas. And then while we're here, we can also see that the cover, I've set it up to uh, print with an outer brim because it has such a small contact area here on the print bed. I feel like that's probably needed just to make sure it doesn't move around while we're trying to, pr trying to print it. And so with both of those things done, um, we can then slice this thing. It looks like this and I'm happy enough with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that over to the printer, get this printed out, and then we will try to assemble this thing and see if it fits on the top of our extruder. Okay, so here are our two parts printed. Um, this one had a, the supports went a little wonky. You might've noticed that in the time lapse, uh, but it printed out okay. I was able to clean it up. And so I decided it wasn't worth trying to reprint it, um, even though the supports right here in this one area failed a little bit. It looks okay. Um, and then here's our cover. And what we're gonna need besides that is one of these screw-in couplers for our PTFE tubing, and then this switch, right? So this is called, uh, the one I ordered from Amazon was called a micro limit switch with momentary roller lever arm. 
So there you go. It's just a micro switch and it happens to have this little roller piece on here um, that should help our filament to roll along nicely. So the way that this works, theoretically, is that we wanna press fit this in here. Now, I am likely gonna to want to probably pull this out and this is, all of this just press fits into place so I can do that pretty easily. Uh, but to solder my two wires onto the, the whichever the correct two pins are here um, to you know trigger that switch, um, I'm gonna probably pull this out later to do that. So for now, we'll see how this fits without the wiring in place. Um, but this presses down into there. You can see that that roller is up in there. And if I grab a piece of filament, we can probably try fitting that down through here. I don't know if the microphone picks up that click, but it is correctly uh, triggering the switch when the filament runs through, so that's good. And um, then the next thing that we're gonna need is, I guess we'll go ahead and put the cover on um, just to show you how it works. For testing, it might be more beneficial to have the cover off, but this thing just slides on this way like so, right? So it covers up that area, but it leaves the, the back open so that our wires can come out. And then once we've done that, we can just screw this into place up top here. And I'm just gonna hand tighten this for now. I will wrench tighten it in the final assembly for sure, just to make sure that it's not nice and tight and not going anywhere. But um, yeah, there we go. So now again, filament runs through. I can hear that click when the switch engages, so that's pretty good. And then if we grab the uh, extruder here, which is still on my partly assembled version of the print head, I've already taken out this little press fit coupler that was in the top here. Um, so I pried that out again. Uh, amazingly, I've done that several times with this particular piece, and I keep thinking I'm gonna damage it every time that I pry it out of something, uh, but it still seems perfectly functional, so that's, a little surprising to me. Um, but what this sh should now be able to do is we're gonna place this into that opening and then like I showed on the CAD or in the in Blender, we're going to go ahead and try to just latch this over this little angled piece right here. Um, so first time I'm trying this uh, and I think maybe the plan is going to be to put it down this way and kind of rotate it that way into place and press it down. It's meant to be quite a tight fit because I want this thing to be very sturdy. So yeah, that snapped into place. Um, you can see here on the front, it's nice and flush everywhere. So that's good. This didn't go in straight. It's a little bit angled that way. So again, tightening it down with a wrench, which I don't have here with me at the moment, um, can probably help out with that, with the alignment there. But this thing seems fairly sturdy. Like I can grab it just by this part and shake the uh, print head around just about every direction here. Yeah, and it's barely moving at all. So I'm fairly confident at the kind of long-term sturdiness of this. Um, <laughs> it looks like, I think I'm just, I'm gonna call this the chimney. I've just come up with this, uh, this name uh, like real time as we're looking at it here. It's pretty funny. It's just sticking straight up from the uh, top of the extruder but let's go ahead and run this down in here. All right, I heard the click, and then I should be able to just grab this and yeah, go ahead and feed that all the way through. So that is working perfectly. Um, nice. And if we loosen it back out and pull it out, yep, the extruder or the sensor disengages. So that looks really good. Struda grabs it, no problem. Awesome, so I'm happy with that. So yeah, and then the nice thing is, um, you know, I haven't put the wiring on this switch yet back here, um, mostly because I'm waiting to figure out the length of wires that I need, but our tool head PCB will be right here. It does have a filament switch, uh, or filament switch style st sensor uh, input on it. And so we should just be able to run the two wires right to here to a JST connector and plug them straight into wherever they go on the back of this tool head PCB. And once that uh, arrives and I you know, figure out the exact positioning of everything, I can go ahead and create those, that wire with that uh, connector on the end and have it be the perfect length so that it just goes straight back there and fits right into there. So that is looking really good. 
Um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. Like I said, the uh, the other components are coming. Hot end fans are on the way. Uh, the beacon probe is actually already here. I just haven't put it on here because I'm I don't want to you know accidentally damage it while I'm assembling and moving other things around. Uh, just as a as a bonus uh, little bit of content for you here as well. I also did I uh, have these little NeoPixel LEDs. Uh, these are the sequin style. LEDs. I've gone ahead already and soldered these together into a harness that's hopefully the correct length to fit from the logo down to the two that go here uh, to light up the nozzle, which are these two here. And then again, I've left the other end of these wires uh, not cut to length yet because I want to, you know, once I get my uh, tool head PCB in place, figure out exactly the length that I need to run up to there. So um, I'm not great at soldering. Uh, but I think that this is all good and ready to go. Uh, soldering something that I probably should just practice more, um, and I feel like I'd be better at it. But I don't do it enough, um, I feel, to, to be a, much of an expert at soldering just yet. But I think that's serviceable enough. So all of those components are here. As soon as everything else, the hardware comes for the hot end and the fans, um, I can disassemble this, then reassemble it. Uh, maybe we'll show that part of that in the next video. And then uh, the next video in the series should be wrapping everything up, getting this thing once it's uh, all put together, installed on the printer and, conf and configured and tested and ready to print. Uh, but yeah, having this filament sensor right here in line, I think is gonna be super helpful. Um, and I'm happy with kind of the small lightweight nature of it. And uh, it doesn't look terrible, I don't think, uh, in here with the rest of the print head. You can let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Uh, maybe I should kind of uh, make this a little more angled to go with the aesthetic of the, of the wristwatch extruder a little bit better uh, rather than so squared off like it is now. Uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. But for now, we're gonna leave it like this. We're gonna call it the chimney. And um, I'm not gonna release the files on myprintables.com profile for this just yet. Uh, I wanna actually try this out in practice in the printer for a little while at least to make sure I'm happy with the performance of it. And then once I've done that, I will go ahead and release those, those files. So if you're watching this video right when it comes out, they won't be available yet. But if you're watching it sometime in the future, several weeks or months uh, after release, there's a good chance that down in the description of this video is a link to uh, these STLs if you wanna go grab those and make one of these for yourself as well. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Uh, just like I said, a quick update. We don't have this thing operational just yet, but I hope that in the next episode it will be. And so I will see you then. And until then, I hope you have a great day.